off a day an hour earlier. I'm Jason Salas, and this is the hotspot, our new time. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait. Is it daylight savings time? No, we don't observe that stuff in Guam. This is our new time slot. It is 11 a.m. I'm Jason Salas. We got a jam-packed show for you today. Talking election. So, here's your menu. The menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant. Always open, always local. And Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh garden bar. All right, here's what's in our data drop for today. An arrest has been made in a robbery that occurred at a dead laundromat on Saturday morning. Also, the last batch of all rise payments have finally been processed. And in national headlines, a deadly shooting in Chicago has left six people dead. Well, three individuals were arrested for a Saturday morning robbery that occurred in the northern village of Dededo. KUM posted video of the victim in the bubble laundry that morning when a man approached him and yanked his gold chain valued at $500 off his neck. The man exited and jumped into a white vehicle before taking off the surveillance video that we also posted was seen by a caller who told GPD he had seen the video at Hemlani's apartments in Harmon. Officers arrived and arrested 35-year-old Matheson New Year's, 21-year-old BK Kansi Petrus, and 20-year-old Lausanne Feinid. A fourth person was booked and released. New Year and Feinid were charged with robbery and possession of drugs and theft as a misdemeanor. Petrus faces third-degree robbery charges as a felony and a theft. Well, good news for you if you're waiting for your all-rise payments, the last batch of such initiatives, the payments have been now processed. Revin Tax announced that on June 30th, the agency processed the last of the payments, consisting of 27 paper checks and 36 electronic fund transfers for a total of 63 payments of about $58,000. From last September through this past June, Revin Tax processed more than 36,000 payments, totaling more than $37 million. Should you have any questions about payments, please contact Revin Tax at 671-635-1840. And staying with that agency, the, they also processed 1,695 tax year 2021 and prior income tax refunds, totaling more than 5 million bucks. These are for error-free returns filed on or before May 9th. If you have any concerns, please go to myguamtax.com and hit the contact us link. Very, very disturbing now as at least six people are dead and two dozen hospitalized after a gunman opened fire at a suburban Chicago 4th of July parade. Police just announced they've identified a person of interest. Here is the very latest. Police in Highland Park, Illinois, say a gunman started shooting into a 4th of July parade from a rooftop in the downtown area. I remember hearing shootings and going like, that's all, and then reloading and then again, and people screaming and running. It was just really traumatizing and scary. Officials say shots started ringing out about 10 minutes after the parade started. At first, the crowd thought the noise was associated with the parade. Then they ran from the scene, leaving their belongings behind. It sounds like spectators were, were targeted and, and even those that were marching through. The parade was approximately three quarters of the way through uh, when the shooting occurred. So uh, very random, very intentional uh, and a, a very sad day. Police are searching for the gunman. The suspect is currently described as a male white, approximately 18 to 20 years old, with longer black hair, a small build, and wearing a white or blue t-shirt. So far, police have recovered a rifle. What I'll say right now is it, it was a high-powered rifle. Officers are going door to door, urging people to shelter in place until this gunman is found. On a day that we came together to celebrate community, and freedom, we're instead mourning the loss, the tragic loss of life and struggling with the terror that was brought upon us. Some 4th of July events in nearby communities have been canceled. From Highland Park, Illinois, Sabrina Franza, CBS News. Back to local headlines, we show you now the portion of the Guam Fire Academy in which recruits get to see firsthand the emergency aspect of pre-hospital care. Joan Ogancharfras has more. The 34 fire recruits from the Guam Fire Department's 22nd fire cycle are about four months into the fire academy. Recruit Christian Santos says it's all about trial and error and learning from the cadres. When we first started, initially it was all pieces, but now it's all starting to come together as one. So it's a culmination of everything and now we're starting to understand from there uh, what it entails to truly be a firefighter and a depiction of what goes on in the field. For almost two weeks, recruits took part in ride-alongs at the Tumuning, Barragada, Dededo, Jico, Estumbo, and Hoggett fire stations. It's part of the Guam Community College's educational requirement prior to the NREMT testing, in which recruits get actual contact with patients. Cadre Lieutenant Joe Sablon explains the purpose for this portion. 
to hone into their skills, to see the actual job that the firefighters do. And believe it or not, you know, some people come back and say, it's for me, it's not for me. But, you know, I'm sure that this group will press on forward because they've been so eager to learn and ready to take on the challenge. And how has it been? Santos and recruit Robert Leon Guerrero share their thoughts. We came from the classroom, so we're learning the technical skills behind it. And we're just getting a, a picture or a brief understanding of what really goes on in the field. But now that we get actual physical hands-on with the uh, patient contacts and actually talking to the patients, uh, seeing their what their chief complaint is, it definitely is an eye opener. This is our first time experiencing it. So, you know, we want to know that we're able to adjust, able to adapt, and we're learning the different methods and techniques to, to do so. As for the challenges? It's just a relentless pursuit um, to, to improve, right, to, to build the standard and, and to make sure that we're acquiring the skill set and the knowledge to, so that when we do come out, um, that we are able to be of service to the community. Despite everything they've endured thus far, the fire recruits taking this journey are one step closer. Coming into it, you know, I, I know most of us, we felt like we had the heart to, to serve our community. And uh, through the academy, we're, we're building our skill set and we're cultivating the mindset, right, to be able to do that. Um, and just continually, you know, trying to, trying to progress, right, trying to challenge ourselves. Um, so yes, it's a struggle, but it's, it's a struggle that we want, right? And you know, it makes it, it makes it more real. And it makes it, you know, the stakes are high. So we want to make sure that we're investing as much as we can into this, um, into this profession, right? This career. Reporting for KM News, I'm Jonah Gancharfis. And of course, it is a new week. Um, although yesterday was a holiday. By the way, Happy Independence Day to those of you watching us in the states. We hope you're having a wonderful and safe Fourth of July. But and because it is a new week, that means we've got a new weekly question on our show that we are posting across our social media profiles. That's, of course, KUM News. And this week, we want to hear from you. This week's question is what questions? Notice that? Plural. What do you have for the candidates? We have four such public servants who will be joining me momentarily, and we are going to share the best responses on our Friday show. And we're going to feature some of your questions when I sit down with the candidates coming up right after this. But tell you what, we are just getting started. And as I said, we are going to talk to two people that have indicated that they will be running for senator two at a time. We have, of course, Senator Frank Bloss Jr. and the minority leader, Senator Chris Duenas, as well as Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano herself, a former senator, and Jonathan Savaris. So we are going to use the incredibly, unbelievably scientific process of picking names out of a coffee mug. First to the Democrats. Up first will be Jonathan Savaris, and he will be replaced, or he will be joined by a member of the G GOP, Incumbent Senator Chris Duenas, the Minority Report. All right, so Mr. Savaris and Senator Duenas, you guys are up. Stay tuned, because when the hotspot returns, we will have Jonathan Savaris and Senator Duenas answering your questions. Stay tuned. That's coming up next. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? You've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture right down to the smallest detail. Unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? You've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture right down to the smallest detail. Unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. As the Decision 2022 race shapes up, keep it with KUAM News for all the news you need to know as you head to the polls. From weekly candidate profile analysis on the hub on KUAM News Hotspot to our online candidate directory on KUAM.com, special features on KUAM Digital and KUAM News Primetime, plus live coverage of forums and debates. We're your one-stop source on every platform. Stay informed with KUAM News, your news leader, the voice of the Marianas. Lunches, snacks, we got diapers for baby girl, oh, 715, we gotta go, uh, bread, milk, gas for work, remember to grab Joe Boy a birthday present. Okay. Um, 
Half a day. Hey, Molly, how much do you pay for daycare for the kids? Uh, over 600 a month. It's expensive. Did you hear about the governor's program that covers up to 675 a month for childcare? Well, that would be a lifesaver with the rising cost of everything. Check wowchildcare.com to apply. We qualified. I even booked an appointment for someone to walk me through the process. Wowchildcare.com. Okay, thanks. I'll apply today. Status paid for federal funds administered by DPHSS. We're serving up lunchtime giveaways with Uno Go throughout the month of July on KOM News Hotspot. Watch us live on KOM TV or any device at 11 a.m. Monday through Thursday for the daily foodie trivia question. Share your answers in the comments on the Facebook live stream or by sending us a direct message via the KOM News or Uno Go Guam Instagram account. Correct answers will be placed into a random weekly drawing for the Uno Go credit of $25. No purchase necessary. Must be a Guam resident or registered Uno Go user to win. Visit uno-go.com or download the app to register and get food delivered to your home or office today. Mark your calendars for the Father Duenas Memorial School Annual Reunion Gala. Saturday, July 16th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Phoenix Center in Ta'i, Manila. Featuring live entertainment, a beer and wine garden, and a fry raffle with an array of excellent prizes. Tickets are $100 per person with VIP tables available for reservation. A special night to reunite, reminisce, and have a great time. All alumni, reunion classes, and guests are invited to attend. For more information and reservation, please call 671-734-2261-3 or visit www.father.com. All proceeds benefit the FDE Endowment Foundation, a 501c entity. Special thanks to all of our sponsors. See website for complete list of sponsors. All right, welcome back. As you saw on that absolutely beautiful graphic, it is election time. Decision 22 has descended upon us, and we are going to profile each and every candidate so that you can make an informed decision when you head to the polls. Now, as we said before we went to the break, I have, of course, the minority leader, Senator Chris Duenas, joining me on behalf of the GOP. And from the Democrats, of course, first-time candidate, Jonathan Savaris, we want to lay down some ground rules first. I'm going to give each of these gentlemen, these distinguished Guamanians, a minute to give you a little bit of an introduction about themselves, who they are, where they come from, and then we're going to go over a series of three questions. They have about 90 seconds each to go over that. So... Gentlemen, off a date. Off a date. A very, day. very good to see. You. First of all, congratulations to you both for deciding, making the decision to serve Guam in the capacity that you are. Very, very noble uh, pursuit. So I would say the incumbent um, has has seniority <laughs> or has precedence. So uh, Senator Duenas, you have sixty Certainly. seconds for a personal introduction, if you would, please. Thank you very much, Jason, and thank you to the KUM family for giving us this opportunity uh, to be before you uh, in this great show to be able to discuss some things about what we might want to do and what we'd like to do in the future. Okay, that camera, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I've been in the, the, doing this before. I'm sure, I don't know why that wasn't at that the camera. The camera loves you, Senator. <laughs> okay, so anyways, my name is Chris Duenas and I'm currently serving in the 36th Guam Legislature. Um, you know, when I decided to run in 2020, I made a decision because I was frustrated and I wanted to focus and make sure that the Guam Legislature was going to be a legislature that will hold the administration accountable and have checks and balances in government. I think for a lot of people were frustrated, although there have been many challenges during the pandemic, I think there were many things that we could have done better. In the 37th Guam legislature, you've seen the Republican caucus really work hard to make sure there are checks and balance in our government. We've really made sure that uh, as far as the budget is concerned, that it's a conservative budget, that we prioritize government resources for education, public self safety, and health care. We have ensured also that for you, the people of Guam, we are going to concentrate on priorities and make sure that accountability and checks and balances are here. And, and so I'm asking once more for that opportunity to provide that check and balance. All right, I'm thank Chris you very Williams. much. Thank you very much, Senator. Very well done. All right, first-time candidate from the village of Dedido. Basically grew up like a stone's throw away from where I grew up in Ipapa. So um, very good to see you, Mr. Savaris. Thank you for having me. Congratulations. You have one minute. Uh, so I would, first and foremost, I want to thank the KUAM family for hosting, the, uh, hosting me today, and as well as Senator uh, Duenas for sitting up here next to me, right? Nice to be next to a senior statesman who's done this before, kind of alleviate the pressures of this whole... Uh, this whole new uh, venture that I'm going through. I want to tell everybody, first and foremost, I grew up in public service. My mom is Mayor Savarez. Uh, for the last 22 years, uh, I've been on the road in the background with my brothers and my family, help, helping support the village. So this is the same kind of mentality, this is the same mentality that I want to take into the legislature. 
over the last eight, I, then I was, uh, I took a, a, a brief stint from that for to go and join and serve our country. I was medically retired from the United States Army uh, for COPD. I want to make sure that we work on uh, getting veterans uh, to understand the issues that ba the burn pits are going to face. I believe that, I personally believe that burn pits are going to be the next issue that, that we saw with our Vietnam veterans with Aging Orange. Then lastly, I was, I've been, for the last eight years, I've been advocating for a cannabis industry, a responsible patient-focused cannabis industry on Guam. And I am number six on the ballot, and I humbly ask for each and every one of your support. All right, thank you so much, John, Jonathan Savaris, and th thank you for your service. Thank you. you know, as, a, as a member of, of the U.S. Army, we do, we do appreciate it, especially on uh, 4th of July, but year-round. All right, let's start with our Q&A uh, question, and we, we're not going to do like what they call in fantasy football, like the snake draft, where we go like back and forth. We're, we're going to go Senator Duenas, Johnson Savaris, Senator Duenas, Easy. Johnson Savaris, if you guys okay. are okay with that. Yes. And remember, you guys, as it says on the graphic right here, we want to see your questions as well. So if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, get your comments in, and we will ask those as well. All right. Senator, yes, of sir. course, you did not start as a minority leader, but you are ending the term as a minority leader. Um, yes. What do you consider your biggest accomplishments over the last two years to be, from, from a personal standpoint, your own perspective? I think the biggest accomplishment uh, that I've been able to uh, do is, is ensure that uh, in the legislature, I've focused on making sure checks and balances are there. I introduced Bill 11, um, which I promised to do during the campaign, actually. And it was designed to ensure that during a public health emergency, the legislature revisits the issue of the emergency every 30 days, working with the administration and bringing in people to have their voices heard, whether it was the fisherman or the farmer or the businessman, big businessman, small businessman, small business person, uh, uh, you know, folks in all, all across our island to be able to come in and express their concerns and also maybe give us some suggestions on how things should work going forward. Unfortunately, that bill didn't pass or didn't uh, get signed into law, but it passed. And if you saw what happened during the resolution 291 when we were discussing these issues, it was finally a time when the legislature was able to hold the administration accountable and bring about additional changes going forward to make things better for our people. I think that's my signature accomplishment. All right, very well. Congratulations, Senator. Yeah. All right, to uh, Jonathan Savaris, um, you mentioned the fact that uh, your mother is a very long, uh, long time public servant, you know, yes. of course, uh, president of the mayor's council uh, for a significant amount of time. So there is, you know, the lineage, the pedigree. Uh, in your own opinion, why are you qualified to be a senator and have the people endorse you? And, and, and what qualities do you have that would make a good public servant? First and foremost, I've always put everybody else first, right? And that's been my, the, the mantra that our family has taken. We don't ask for accolades. We try not to sit up here in, on the studio and the sets because at the end of the day, there's still more work to be done. And that's kind of the, the, the mindset that I'm gonna take into the legislature, right? Over the last 20 plus years, we've always been out there during typhoons. And it's not about asking for, it's not about the credit that's, that's there. It's about doing what's right by our people. And this is kind of the, the mindset, this is the mindset that I'm take, I wanna take into the legislature because at the end of the day, we, if we have so much time to be up here on set, you, there's a lot more work to be done. We constantly see junk cars piling up, white goods, and these things are, are issues that is an ongoing challenge that we see, and in, in, not just in Derido, but in every single village. And these are things that I wanna make sure that when I get in there, we, we, I work to, with the mayor's council to streamline it for every single village, because these are the constant things that we, that we deal with, the constituents call it every day into the mayor's office to complain about. Mm -hmm. Very well. And because you grew up on a sing song, you went to, um, I'm assuming you went to JFK? I went to Simon Sanchez. And Sa I, when, I get into, when, I get, when I get into the legislature, I want to make sure that I work with whoever the administration is, is uh, you know, to, to, to finish that project. I hear that they're going to be breaking ground soon, and I want to make sure that when we, they build up J uh, Sanchez, we, work, we, we get the new technology into there. All right. Very excellent. Well done. Okay. Uh, Senator Duane, your second question. Mm -hmm. If reelected, what will your top priority be? And you know, and they say you know the first 30 days, the first 45 days. There's different measurements and everything. But when you hit the ground running and return to your now familiar seat in the legislature, what do you plan to do? What do you want to get done? You know, I, I got to tell you that um, there's so many things to do. Economic development is really so important right now. Diversification of our economy. But one of the biggest things I really want to concentrate on is what I started on and working with my colleagues when we introduced the resolution to try to help the administration in the expenditures of ARP funding. 
We put in there to put $25 million into Tomorrowland Trust so that we can put infrastructure in and start working on affordable housing. I, I made sure that Guam Housing Corporation got their $500,000 rebated to them so they can help first-time homeowners with that $10,000 down payment credit. You know, the bottom line is, is that dignity of having a home, having some place to call your own, a roof over your head, really enhances the family environment, makes sure that we can help our people going forward. When we get Chamorro Land Trust developed, it will help all of our families across the board. And there are other programs that we need to work on. Housing is the biggest reason why people are leaving Guam, because of the fact that it's just too hard to live on this island with so many pressures. But if you can't even have the dignity of a home and a place to live, that's a problem. So I want to concentrate on affordable housing. All right, a very ambitious goal to be to be sure, Senator. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right, John Savaris, uh, what will be? I'd like to ask you the same question as I did the good senator, but maybe like with a twist, because you said based on your own uh, experience as someone who wore the military uniform, you want to focus on uh, veterans affairs. So, if that is one of your primary goals as a senator, should you be elected? How do you get there? So, one thing that a lot of veterans don't understand in the cannabis industry. Uh, the, Ve the Veterans Health Administration actually has a directive to, that talks about veterans use of cannabis and the way that we regulate this is making sure that it's actually VHA Veterans Health Administration Directive 1315. What it states in the directive is that veterans who want to part who are participating in a state sanctioned medical cannabis program that in order to have a discussion with uh, the VA and be right by the VA, they have to be registered through the state. And one thing I want to do is streamline it, streamline it. One, taking the veterans, uh, veterans ratings, uh, because this is a federal rating and we know vet medical cannabis patients here are struggling to find doctors. So in order to eliminate that doctor thing, they're gonna, I'm gonna, rec I'm gonna introduce into law or into, into, in a bill that we eliminate that and use their VA rating and then take it further and then like treat it like licenses where, where we give it to veterans for free because we do this with other mechanisms on this island. All right, well, maybe you can uh, pick up uh, the, the now work. vacated seat by Senator Clint Burgell, who will not be seeking okay. like re-election is and, and who has done a lot of work uh, towards that end. So uh, well done. All right, Senator Duenas, uh, your mm -hmm. final question. Um, as you mentioned, you know, you were unsuccessful twice in passing a bill that would have extended uh, or that sought to um, terminate. For, yeah, to terminate the public health okay. emergency. Thank right. you. Uh, I know you're a big sports guy, right? Yes. If you're going for if you're already 0 for 2, why do you go for like a th uh, third attempt and how would you maybe like, um, should you seek to do that again? How would you change your strategy or your approach? You know, I think what's important here, Jason, is that the people of Guam are the ones who are the bosses, right? And what's important is it's not about a, a governor uh, in terms of a person, it's about the job of governor, the job of the legislature. I think and I hope that I'm able to convince if I'm fortunate to serve, that I'm able to convince the next body coming in that it is so important that we, yes, we work well with the administration to get things done, but it is our job to make sure that we keep that proper check and balance, that the people's voice is heard within the legislature, and, and, and that is something that is so important. You know, I understand the programs that are ne were in need of extension, helping out SNAP benefits. I completely understand that. I understand the situation and the great job that the National Guard did. But nationally, and I showed that through studies and research, nationally, those programs were extended on a standalone basis. But, th but other jurisdictions opened up faster, allowing the economy to grow and to expand and to get jobs back faster. That's why it's important that we do this job of making sure the legislature always keeps things moving and moving along. And that's, right. So I'll give it another shot. All right, thank you, Senator, and thank you for your candor on that. A key takeaway, at least for me, when that was making your voice heard, and mm -hmm. I know you have made your voice heard on numerous occasions in the legislature, but also you make your voice heard at the 930 Mass down at, <laughs> a, at the cathedral every Sunday, and we, we certainly appreciate that as well. God has given us all gifts, and so we need to use God's gifts. Absolutely, and you are using yours, so thank, thank you for you. that. All right, Johnson Savaris, your uh, final question as a first-time Democrat uh, candidate for Senator. What do you think is a top issue of the majority of Guam's voters, and how would you seek to address whatever you believe that to be? So one thing that i keep hearing on the on the ground is economic recovery mm -hmm. and as we look at at, at 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 our plan moving forward right now is a perfect time to re, re to diversify our tourism economy and restructure it one big one of the biggest things that i've been looking at and trying to push for the last six years is is medical cannabis tourism currently japan has well during the calvo administration japan came to guam 
and asked to bring their medical cannabis patients here. The total network is 1.5 million people. The, they want to send, just to start within the first, the first 12 months of the, the relationship, is send 10% of their, their people here for two to four weeks. This changes the dynamic of tourism from two to three days, two to four days of what we see currently, to two to four weeks, not including the additional revenue that they're, 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 they're going to be putting into restaurants, stores, as well as the cannabis industry, which is going to have a new tax, which is a new tax revenue and tax segment for, the, for our island. All right. So, gentlemen, very well done. We appreciate the time and the, and, and the honesty. Uh, real quick, before we go, I'll give you guys five seconds each. Give the people out there some, some quirky thing like about your personality, you know, aside from your platform and, and your official, you know, CV and your background and everything like that. Senator Duenas, with you, five seconds. What should people, what don't people know about Chris Duenas? What people might not know about Chris Duenas is I have a mantra in my life. The best day fish, the worst day fishing is still better than the best day working. There I you go. I love fishing. <laughs> a lot of the KUM production staff are avid fishermen themselves. So <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, expert angler for sure. And Jonathan Savar, some some aspect of your personality that people may not know. So, one of the biggest things that I've looked, I've I've learned in life is make sure you have fun in everything you do, and enjoy what you enjoy what life has to offer, and and always look forward for look for the look for the glass being half empty versus half, half full versus half empty. Right on. The, ever, ever the optimist. Well, we hope this has been fun for the both of you gentlemen. Absolutely. And good, Absolutely. Luck, good luck on the campaign trail. And we have got more fun coming up. So stay tuned because Senator Frank Voss Jr. is looking to repeat. He is, of course, an incumbent and he wants your vote again so he can continue his work with a seat in the legislature. Doc, also, Dr. Kelly March Titan, a former senator, looks to reclaim the seat that she former sat, sat in in the legislature. But she's going to have a seat on our set right after this. So stay tuned. They're coming up. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. As the Decision 2022 race shapes up, keep it with KUAM News for all the news you need to know as you head to the polls. From weekly candidate profile analysis on the hub on KUAM News Hotspot to our online candidate directory on KUAM.com, special features on KUAM Digital and KUAM News Primetime, plus live coverage of forums and debates. We're your one-stop source on every platform. Stay informed with KUAM News, your news leader, the voice of the Marianas. Snacks. We got diapers for baby girl. Oh, 715, we gotta go. Uh, bread, milk. Gas for work. Remember to grab Joe Boy a birthday present. Mm -hmm. um, Half a day. Hey Molly, how much do you pay for daycare for the kids? Uh, over 600 a month, it's expensive. Did you hear about the governor's program that covers up to $675 a month for childcare? Well, that would be a lifesaver with the rising cost of everything. Check guamchildcare.com to apply. We qualified. I even booked an appointment for someone to walk me through the process. Guamchildcare.com. Okay, thanks. I'll apply today. This ad is paid for with federal funds administered by DPHSS. Say hello to the first Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Want a better look at your spending? With Money Map, you can automatically create budgets and manage where your money is going. Know when you have a green light or when it's time to slow down. Maybe cook more meals at home this week. Set your goals, track your progress, and find your way to exactly where you want to be. With Money Map from the first Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. We're serving up lunchtime giveaways with Uno Go throughout the month of July on KOM News Hotspot. Watch us live on KOM TV or any device at 11 a.m. Monday through Thursday for the daily foodie trivia question. Share your answers in the comments on the Facebook live stream or by sending us a direct message via the KOM News or Uno Go Guam Instagram account. Correct answers will be placed into a random weekly drawing for the Uno Go credit of $25. No purchase necessary. Must be a Guam resident or registered Uno Go user to win. Visit uno-go.com or download the app to register and get food delivered to your home or office today. 
Mark your calendars for the Father Duenas Memorial School Annual Reunion Gala. Saturday, July 16th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Phoenix Center in Ta'i Manila. Featuring live entertainment, a beer and wine garden, and a fry raffle with an array of excellent prizes. Tickets are $100 per person with VIP tables available for reservation. A special night to reunite, reminisce, and have a great time. All alumni, reunion classes, and guests are invited to attend. For more information and reservations, please call 671-734-2261 or 3 or visit www.father.com. All proceeds benefit the FBE Endowment Foundation, a 501c entity. Special thanks to all of our sponsors. See website for complete list of sponsors. Candidate Conversations continues right here. You are watching the live stream on YouTube and on Facebook Live. We're also live on broadcast on KUM TV 8. Half a day, everybody from back home. I'm Jason Salas. And again, if you're watching us in the States, we wish you and your family a very, very happy Fourth of July. I have two distinguished members of our community once again uh, joining me, incumbent Senator Frank Blass Jr. Way over there, Senator. You seem like you're a mile away, but it is really good to see you face to face after can, we can spent you basically. Say that again? Okay. <laughs> so, good Senator, buenas. <laughs> buenas. <laughs> Very good to see you. Isn't it supposed to be hoy? <laughs> oh, there, <laughs> when there you're you go. For an well, I, well, my my nana raised me to be very, very respectful. So, That's true. Dr. That's Kelly March tied to know former senator. Uh, very good to see you. And likewise, you know, you you joined us many, many times on the link like, in the morning show. That's but true. it's good to see you here. Yeah, so happy to be here. Okay, so we're going to give you each uh, 60 seconds for a little quick introduction. You can go over it as as much as you want or any aspect of your of your life, uh, but. What should we do first? The, the incumbent has priority or ladies, ladies first? first. Ladies, ladies, okay. First. Spoken like a true gentleman. So. <laughs> ladies first. Dr. Kelly Marsh Taito, you have 60 so seconds. So is this a personal introduction? Whatever you wish, even your platform. Okay. Yeah. Ladies choice and ladies preference. Half <laughs> day <laughs> and manana si So I'm um, happy to be here. I'm a daughter of Guam. My parents came out here as educators in the 60s and fell in love with the island and the community so much that we stayed and made our home here. So I have stayed here and made it my home and love the community as well and have stepped up to try to help out the community when we see that there are so many issues to address. One of my main issues is a sustainable Guam. We need to make sure that we're balancing out the economic growth, the development, with making sure that we're keeping the island and not compromising it for our future generations, which I'm sure all of us want to do for our children and our grandchildren. Very nice. Um, and of course, the good doctor also has a absolutely outstanding TikTok profile. <laughs> if you guys haven't checked it out, so, so follow Dr. Kelly March Titan on, on TikTok. Really, really fun stuff. All right. To the incumbent senator, who I noticed you've got a very, very distinct uh, logo on your shirt right there. Of course, uh, of Greg course, Norman. Really? Greg Norman? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So the, the shark. So uh, if you would like to make an appeal not only to all Guamanians, but to all uh, golfers as well, you have 60 seconds, Senator. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, half a day and good morning, everybody. My name is Frank Bloss Jr. Uh, yes, I'm an incumbent, uh, uh, running again once again and asking for your vote of confidence uh, in this year's uh, election for senator. Uh, I've had a distinguished and a long career, uh, not just serving in government, but serving our people of Guam. Uh, I've, I've served, I started off as, as, a, as a police officer, worked as adjunct professor with uh, the uh, Guam Community College. Um, was a business consultant for a number of years, then uh, joined uh, forces with uh, my father uh, in putting together a family-owned insurance uh, brokerage and, and business consulting firm. Uh, I jumped back into politics a couple of years ago, um, seeing that uh, you know we were going through some very trying times. And in those trying times, we're continuing to have these trying times, and I want to continue to work on projects on, and, and on legislation that can help our people and our economy back up. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you very much, Senator. Very well done. Okay, let's go ahead and begin the Q&A portion of this. And uh, Senator and uh, Dr. Titano, we, uh, each of you will have one minute to do these, and we'll start with uh, Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano. Uh, I'd like to kind of uh, reflect on your previous senatorial term. What do, you, in your view, you know, you are an, ac you are an academic and everything. You, you're always like very analytical and everything like that. And using that lens, what would you say was your biggest um, accomplishment as an elected senator? Well, there are two things, I mean, that fit into each other. Uh, one is when people come up to me, they say that they really appreciate what I stand for, but they also really appreciate that I was level-headed, as you're talking about, that I was analytical, and I really spoke to the issue. One of the, my biggest accomplishments is 
uh, updating and modernizing the comprehensive uh, development plan to infuse it with sustainable principles. So that plan had been around uh, since Ricky Bertaglio's time. And so there's so much that we've learned about climate change, about the rising sea level, zero waste initiatives, just in all kinds of, of ways that we've modernized as a society and as specialized fields. So we put all of that into this plan and it's now uh, in action. And so the community will be able to participate and I'm very proud of that. All right, very well done, Dr. Kelly Marsh Titan. All right, Senator Frank Blas Jr., um, I'd like to ask you the same question, but you know, relative to the current term and everything, you were part of a generation of senators that came back to public service saying, you know, our island is probably in the worst position it's been certainly during all of our lifetimes because of the pandemic. Yourself, Senator Tony Adda, Senator Joanne Brown, all came back. What do you think your greatest accomplishment was in these scant two years that you've been able to jump back into public service in that capacity? Well, I, first off, I, I think that my experience in law enforcement and as, and as being um, the Homeland Security Advisor gave me some insight in, on, on basically how to deal and, and how the community should be able to deal with, with crisis situations. Um, and in, in dealing these things, you know, a couple of things that we needed to work on is, uh, okay, how do we best serve the community in times when it's very difficult to serve the community? Um, how, where do we put our resources? How can we manage the resources so that we can get those, uh, the help that the community needs uh, into their hands? And um, so in my term, in my short term uh, in this legislature, what I've worked on is not just legislation that, or, and, or communications uh, with uh, the administration and with my colleagues on ways that we can improve and ways we can get the, uh, the island back up uh, and get the help that our, that our people need um, in these in these trying times, and that's that's been the focus of of my uh, of my legislative term. This All term. right, very well, Senator. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano. Um, you come into this uh, election with a very unique perspective, having previously won and the last time just narrowly missing. So you you've got experience, you know, from both sides. Um, should you be reelected this time, how are you mapping out your strategy to, to say this is what I want to work on? This is what I probably have to work on. And how do you go about that? And what will be your top priorities? Yes, so, uh, you know, obviously I've been thinking about this and of course I, I keep my main platform, but I wanted to learn from and build on the experiences that I had in the past. So I wanted to do a more thorough job of looking at the landscape, looking at uh, land issues, looking at uh, zoning issues, looking at these different fields, health issues and so forth, and spend more time in a broader range of issues while still kind of, there's the ability oftentimes to tie it on back. One of the things that I was doing last time around was I really was trying to look at economic rebuilding and I still am focusing on that. And with that economic rebuilding, it really still ties in with those sustainable principles. These other uh, areas are no longer accepting our uh, refuse, our glass, our tires and things like this. And these are economic opportunities. So I want to continue to do that work. Absolutely. As they, as they so often say, one man's trash is another man's treasure, and there is opportunity in that, and possibly with economic benefits. So thank Definitely. you, Dr. Yes. Kelly Marsh Titan. All right, Senator Frank Balash Jr., um, same question. If indeed reelected, uh, what is your number one priority in going? I think the number one priority here is bring, getting our economy back up to where it should be. We've gone through almost three years of a very stagnant economy that basically relied um, a lot on, on, on stimulus funding and aid that came in. Nothing in as far as organic, uh, you know, occurred. And, 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 and granted it is starting to occur, but we still have about three years of catch up to, to do. You know, that's close to about 3.6 or $3.7 billion of an economy that we need to rebuild back up. I appreciate, you know, Dr. Kelly Marsh's thing, and as far as wanting to view the landscape, this gives us an opportunity now to be able to look at whether we had too many eggs in one basket and whether we should spread this out a little bit more. What are some of the other areas that we can we, we, we can probably diversify in as far as our economy so that we don't have to worry about having to, you know, to store our own refuse and not be able to use it. Look at a number of different things now, but at the same time, just getting our people back up on their feet, 
you know, uh, and, and getting this economy thriving again. That's what I want to focus on. Very true. Money makes the world go round, as they say, and you know, you have to figure out a way to make money. Right. Yeah, and that, that's something that generations of Guamanians have now been saying. So best of luck to you in achieving that end. All right, round three, and this will be the final question. And Dr. Kelly Marsh, tied to know, I'm going to ask you to put on some what might be some very um, uncomfortable, let's say shades, right? Some, some Ray-Bans, <laughs> right? Why okay. do you think you were not reelected like the last time? And strategically, tactically, um, what do you do different this time to earn the trust of the people and to earn their endorsement so that you could again serve as a senator? Well, I believe that uh, the community, by and large, they look at me as a person who's authentic, who really cares about the issue, and who tries to vote my consciousness, um, conscience, conscience. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was a very complex uh, election. It was spread out over a long period of time. We did and didn't have our signs up. Uh, and getting the message out when they started in voting over a long period of time, which by the way, I wrote that early voting law <laughs> so that it would spread us out. We wouldn't be congregating. We could make sense of the pandemic at the time and, and um, you know, protect our sacred right to vote. So there are issues like that. We saw whole swaths of populations that didn't really come out. And those were some of the areas that supported me. So I am out there to earn people's trust, to get to know people, to listen, and um, to just continue meeting as many people as I can and, and answering the issues the best I can. Thank you very, very much, Doctor. All right, and Senator Frank Bloss, Jr. Um, again, and putting into perspective some of the, the trials and tribulations that you naturally have gone through as a, as a policymaker. Uh, in this term, you, of course, pushed the governor to spend the remainder of the American Rescue Plan funding on direct assistance. Um, apparently, you don't believe she's done enough, so what can you do to change her mind or to, or to get her on board with, with what you believe is the right thing to do? Well, you know, I've always gone on, on the mantra. Uh, it does not matter to me who gets the credit, just get it done. And if my conversation, if I can spur a conversation where things can start to move uh, in the direction where people are going to get more of the help, uh, and, it, and who gets the credit, that's fine. Get it into the hands of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt that I've been able to do this in, 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 my, in my letters uh, to, the, to, to the governor and my conversations with my colleagues. Uh, there have been you know, legislation and there has been conversation about you know, whether how to use some excess federal, I mean, one monies we have in, in, uh, within the fiscal year, or to even, even one pushing the governor uh, to, to move on spending the, 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 that American Rescue Plan money where it should be spent on the people. So, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter to me who gets the credit for it. Mm -hmm. Just get it done. Get it to the people's hand. He knows what I did. And that, well, that's all that matters to me. Absolutely. Okay. And before we give uh, the, these two distinguished Guamanians again a chance to uh, make their final plea to you, story time, real quick. Uh, Senator Frank Blas Jr. joined us on the link uh, several months ago. Came in at about maybe 6.15 in the morning. Worst case of hiccups I've ever heard of human oh, being yeah. having. Every 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Always doing that stuff, right? He, we got him talking about like pushing the governor on ARP funding and everything. Killed the hiccups. You <laughs> completely, did. <laughs> completely gone. So for those of you in med school right now, just take that. It was the steroids that they put into my knee. I, I, I figured that out because uh, I had the hiccups for about three days. Or you oh, know, wow. talk politics and everything. It takes care of the hiccups. <laughs> exactly. Right okay, so uh, we'd like now to give you, um, as we did with our previous uh, candidates, um, some weird factoids, some 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 quirky, maybe um, eccentric <laughs> aspect of yourself that maybe. Uh, people that have only seen your signs or watched your commercials or heard you speak publicly, something they don't know about yourself that would engender you and, and have them consider you as a, as a senator. So, Dr. Kelly March, tight to know. You know, one of the things uh, that maybe people don't know is I grew up in various parts of the island. And so when we were going around and introducing ourselves to the community, I kept on being able to say, and I went to school here. And I think some people were, were asking themselves, did you really go to school here? But it's really true. And I, I treasure that. I think that that made such a difference for me. Most of my life was growing up in Dededo. I went to Maria, Ujoa, and Weddingale. But then I also went to Price Elementary and lived in Manilao. And then we uh, moved a little further south. And in Ipan Talafofo, I went to uh, MU Lujan and in Alahan Junior High. I got to find out the environments, the communities in all those areas, play in the rivers, um, cat shrimp, all of that stuff, which I would have never have known if I had stayed in Dededo there. So 
Um, I really appreciate that experience, and I really did go to school in all those areas. Very I didn't nice. just say it. <laughs> okay, Price Elementary, by the way, probably the best playground of any elementary school like on Guam. You yes. can see it from the road. It's fantastic. Okay, Senator Bloss, I, I hope I didn't take away like one wonderful aspect of you when I said you had like that terrible case of hiccups and everything. But but what is what is some other uh, maybe lesser lesser known aspect of your personality that uh, the voters might want to know? Oh, you play guitar. I play. You, I, you know, I play the guitar and I make an awesome tofu mo mobile tofu spam dish. One of these days, I share the recipe with you. Yeah. My wife. Okay, never it. mind the recipe. I want the real thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. If you would have, if you would, wouldn't mind sharing. Oh yes, it, yeah. what it is is two cans of wholemeal chili, no beans. Okay. okay. Uh, firm uh, tofu, and uh, and and a, a can of spam. Chop up the spam, dice up the spam, brown it really nice. Throw in the the the, the, ch the chili. Yeah. Okay, and then saute it a little bit, and then cube up the the, the tofu. Put it in, serve it up, and, and, and you know, simmer it for about two, three minutes. Serve it over a plate of rice. Of course, you know, us chumos, we always have to have rice. And then just take a nap for the next six yeah. hours, I would assume. Mobu <laughs> tofu spam. Hormel tofu. Okay, Pete Anderson, it's his birthday today and everything like that. that you've you already try, given Pete. him like a, a, a birthday present with like endless value. So, <laughs> Senator Frank Bloss Jr., Dr. Kelly Marsh Titan, you know, we wish you both the best and best of luck to your families. Thank you very as, much. As, because uh, I, I, know, I know both of you very, very well. I've had the pleasure of interviewing many times over the years. And it really is like a family event when, all, you, know, when you really hit the campaign. You know, by, you know by, by, by her marriage, we're related. <laughs> how, how close are you, are you related? Quetu. We're, 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 oh, uh, yes, yeah. Quetu Titano. Oh, okay. okay, so yes. Tyrone's family and, yeah. and your family. Uh, all right, well, best of luck and let, let's, let's keep it civil. Let's keep it fun. <laughs> and it is going to be. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so me and my cousin here, we're going to be out on the campaign trail. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so, so primos and primas watching this all over the world and everything, please stay tuned because we got more when we return. Please stay tuned. Subscribe to our KOM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOM News team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KOM Communications. Go to KOM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. As the Decision 2022 race shapes up, keep it with KUAM News for all the news you need to know as you head to the polls. From weekly candidate profile analysis on the hub on KUAM News Hotspot to our online candidate directory on KUAM.com, special features on KUAM Digital and KUAM News Primetime, plus live coverage of forums and debates. We're your one-stop source on every platform. Stay informed with KUAM News, your news leader, the voice of the Marianas. Snacks. We got diapers for baby girl. Oh, 715, we gotta go. Uh, bread, milk. Gas for work. Remember to grab Joe Boy a birthday present. Mm -hmm. Half a day. Hey Molly, how much do you pay for daycare for the kids? Uh, over 600 a month, it's expensive. Did you hear about the governor's program that covers up to 675 a month for childcare? Well, that would be a lifesaver with the rising cost of everything. Check guamchildcare.com to apply. We qualified. I even booked an appointment for someone to walk me through the process. Guamchildcare.com. Okay, thanks, I'll apply today. This ad is paid for with federal funds administered by DPHSS. Say hello to the first Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Want a better look at your spending? With Money Map, you can automatically create budgets and manage where your money is going. Know when you have a green light or when it's time to slow down. Maybe cook more meals at home this week. Set your goals, track your progress, and find your way to exactly where you want to be. With Money Map from the first Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. 
We're serving up lunchtime giveaways with Uno Go throughout the month of July on KOM News Hotspot. Watch us live on KOM TV or any device at 11 a.m. Monday through Thursday for the daily foodie trivia question. Share your answers in the comments on the Facebook live stream or by sending us a direct message via the KOM News or Uno Go Guam Instagram account. Correct answers will be placed into a random weekly drawing for the Uno Go credit of $25. No purchase necessary. Must be a Guam resident or registered Uno Go user to win. Visit uno-go.com or download the app to register and get food delivered to your home or office today. Mark your calendars for the Father Duenas Memorial School Annual Reunion Gala. Saturday, July 16th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Phoenix Center in Ta'i, Manila. Featuring live entertainment, a beer and wine garden, and a fry raffle with an array of excellent prizes. Tickets are $100 per person with VIP tables available for reservation. A special night to reunite, reminisce, and have a great time. All alumni at reunion classes and guests are invited to attend. For more information and reservations, please call 671-734-2261 or 3 or visit www.fatherduenas.com. All proceeds benefit the FBE Endowment Foundation, a 501c entity. Special thanks to all of our sponsors. See website for complete list of sponsors. All right, everybody, we are back. The hot spot continues. Thank you so much to the four, again, distinguished Guamanians. Congratulations to them, their teams, the families, everybody behind them for making the conscious decision to run for public office. Not an easy thing to do. Very, very tiring, very, very exhausting, very, very expensive, but also incredibly rewarding. So we as Guamanians appreciate um, them setting up for that. So again, Jonathan Savaris, uh, Senator Chris Duenas, the minority leader of the legislature, uh, incumbent Senator Frank Bloss Jr., who you just heard of, along with Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano. You can go on YouTube and watch that. All right, so all July long, we are giving away food credits going towards your next delivery purchase on the Uno Go app and website. All you got to do is be a registered user on the Uno Go app or site, answer the trivia question correctly that you see now on your screen, and tune in on Friday for the drawing. You can play along all week for more chances to win this week's trivia contest. Today's trivia contest is what is the name of the Hyatt Regency Guam's popular chocolate... Uh, cho Man, we're talking about tofu and Hormel chili and spam, and now we're talking about chocolate desserts? I'm hungry. We don't even do the show at 12 o'clock anymore. I'm super hungry already. All right. Is it chocolate mud cake, brownies, or chocolate pudding cups? Remember, you can win a gift certificate from our friends at Uno Guam, and they will rush your order right over. You could possibly get one of these, so we want to know. What at the Hyatt, made of chocolate, is their possible... Possible? No, they're popular. That's what I meant. They're popular. I can't even think straight right now. I'm, I'm thinking of chocolate. All right. What is the popular chocolate dessert available on Uno Go? So make sure to get your uh, entries in. You can add them on comments on YouTube and on Facebook and make sure uh, to let us know because you could possibly win a $25 gift certificate for Uno Go and best of luck to you. All right. On more important news on Sunday, our friends at the Memor Menengen Memorial Foundation held a very, very solemn ceremony continuing an island tradition of infinite importance to our community's history, our ancestors, and to future generations. Today being a time when we as American citizens celebrate our national independence, it's also essential to look back and always remember the sacrifice our people made during incredibly dark times, and through our actions, ensure their legacy is preserved forever. The only thing you need to understand is that everybody suffered but some suffered more. The Menengan Valley, nestled between Talafofo and Jotnya, is hallowed ground to any resident of Guam, being the site where scores of native Chamorros were forced to march and endure hardships and inhumane atrocities. The Menengan site was used by Japanese Imperial forces as a concentration camp, the largest of several throughout the island. The women of my clan who marched that day recounted that exhaustion from walking miles in the heat with difficulty as she tried to keep from slipping in the muddy slopes while carrying an infant in her arms, caused my grandmother to fall several times. This angered the soldiers who were in charge. Add to that the fact that according to the family members who marched with her, the soldiers also targeted her because of her reddish skin, hair and light skin or American appearance. Sunday's annual ceremony was a chance for neighbors, leaders, family members, military personnel, and others to recognize what happened and what was given. Our revered World War II survivors were recognized, with numerous stories being shared. The emotion was overwhelming for those who spoke about loss, grief, and how so many 
were made to senselessly suffer and die during the occupation of Guam. And for many, like Jotun Mayor Bill Kenga, the pain remains very fresh in his memories. I was raised in Meningun almost my entire life. Well, growing up, I heard many stories of Meningun, I mean, of what our people experienced during the war from my grandma, my mom, my auntie, <clears throat> uncles and friends. It broke my heart to see the pain in my mother's eyes as she described abuse. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the torture they endured. This only confirms that there is no, no greater burden, nor greater honor than to bear the loss of a, of a loved one. All right, if you happen to jump in the show uh, right after we started, first of all, shame of you. Punctuality is everything, but don't worry because we got you here at KU. And remember, all of our shows are on demand, so you can check us out on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook timeline, and you can also catch us on KUM TV. Just make sure to go to KUM.com and check out the program schedule uh, for the repeat airing. So lots of opportunities, lots of times when you can watch your favorite interviews here on the hotspot, including all of these candidate conversations. And that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. All right, coming up on Thursday, July 7th, we have the following candidates joining us scheduled to appear our congressional or senatorial candidate, I should say, from the Democrats, Angela Santos, Franklin Bunk Bunker Menno. He is, of course, a Democrat as well. And then for Republicans, first time candidate Bistra Mendiola, as well as Harvey Egna, of course, a member of the GOP as well. Okay, we need to end the show the right way. We've talked about politics. We've talked about goings on in the community. Let's talk once more about chocolate because we want you guys to actually have $25 worth of gift certificates from our friends at Uno Go. And if you can give me the right answer, what is the name of the Hyatt Regency Guam's popular chocolate dessert that is available on Uno Go? Is it A, chocolate mud cake, B, brownies, or C, chocolate pudding cups? I'm, I'm basically begging you to get chocolate. There is no better way to celebrate a belated 4th of July than with chocolate. So, what is Hyatt Regency's popular chocolate dessert that's available on Uno Go? All right, it's not a trick question. Even, even make a guess, flip a coin if the coin has three sides. That makes no sense. All right, chocolate mud cake, A, B brownies, or C, chocolate pudding cups. I'm clearly losing my mind. I gotta go get some chocolate and possibly make a, a tofu hormel chili, as a good senator was saying. So. Best of luck to you if you are watching this right now, and we hope we can hook you up with $25 worth of Uno Go because it is a wonderful service. We'll deliver to your place of employment, to your home, to wherever you are. Thank you to our friends at Uno Go for setting this up. All right, that's gonna do it for our show. We hope you have a pleasant Tuesday. Once again, a wonderful Independence Day for all of you watching in the mainland. I'm Jason Salas, and for all of us here at KUAM, we'll see you tonight at six for Prime Time. Bye.